Well, hello, and uh, today I wanted to just welcome Christine um, on uh, to our call. And uh, Christine did my Busting Through Inflammation program. And so I just wanted to share with you uh, what, you know, what Christine's process was like um, and how she felt about the program as she, as she went through it. And it is very unique for all of us. Um, you know, we all experience things very differently because our bodies are unique. So I just wanted you to get a take uh, of someone who has done the program. So welcome, Christine, and thanks for joining Hello. me. So, um, Christine, when I first uh, developed this program, what was what appealed to you about coming and joining the, the program? Well, I've been dealing with uh, and sometimes suffering with IBS for more than 40 years, and I had changed my diet umpteen times and I had tried different kinds of ways of dealing with it. And then I learned more about elimination programs and I had tried a couple of those, but I found them too restrictive because you kind of have to cut everything out for eight to 12 weeks. And um, so what appealed to me about your program was the fact that we were going to be eliminating the foods uh, gradually and then reintroducing them. So there really wasn't a, a really long period of time, I guess, with the exception of the sweeteners. I think that was really the only one that was a really long time. The rest of them were relatively short, um, you know, just a few weeks at a time. So yeah. that was that was good. And I'd also learned more um, inflammation a lot of people think of that with joint pain, and I know that was an issue for you. And um, but so we had different issues, um, but all stemming from inflammation. Mm -hmm. And so the more I learned about that, the more I knew um, from having worked with you before on your 10 day reset programs, I knew that, that you would be developing a good program. And I was looking for something that would have some longer time to implement it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, um, okay. I think, yeah. Um, yeah, like the gradual approach. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I, th I think I just like the whole way you laid it out. And then um, knowing that you would be there with me to support me through the program. Yeah, and to give some guidance as to substitutions you could use and different things that you could right. try. And but you're so right. I initially created this program because I had joint pain, um, but that is how inflammation showed itself in my body. But it, you know, these common triggers can cause inflammation, and it shows up so differently for all of us. So um, when I originally had started this program, I thought, oh, I'll, I'll I'll do it for joint pain. But when people figured or found out that it was around gut health. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people uh, jumped on board because they knew that, you know, I just need, I know I need to, you know, heal my gut, um, balance those microbiomes, and then my inflammation will, will go down. So yeah, it, do, it does appeal to, to a lot of people who are, are going through uh, inflammation. Right. So you said that um, the, uh, the sweeteners, was that the most difficult part of the program, like removing the sugar? At first, yes. Uh, eliminating the sugar and the sweeteners was really tough. Um, I love chocolate and I love to bake and I, I try and only eat dark chocolate that doesn't have a high amount of sugar in it, but it does have some sugar in it. Mm -hmm. And um, I like to bake and so finding uh, a good sweetener substitutes, which you were able to, well, which I already knew from you, but I didn't know how well they had worked. And I also was able to even play with them and reduce the amount of them that I used. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly as we went along, my body got used to not having the sweetener. And so then I would make something with the same way I made it before. And, oh, no, that's too mm -hmm. sweet. And so then I know I could cut it back even further. Mm -hmm. So finding ways to cut down on the sweeteners or find replacements got easier. And then when it came time to actually eliminating the chocolate, which I think was week five or something, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't find it tough at all. Mm. Could you because you'd already I removed. Had been, I yeah. had been cutting back 
on it anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, giving up grains was another tough thing, especially I love crackers. Mm -hmm. And quite often I will I will just snack on a handful of crackers um, when I when I need something quick. Mm -hmm. And so I found that hard. Mm -hmm. But as with everything else, it got easier. And I was able to find other things that I could put something on to mm -hmm. substitute for a cracker, like a roasted seaweed slice or um, just roll up um, some meat and cheese and, and not have it on a cracker, just yeah. have it by itself, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So um, that that was easier too. Um, but just, strangely enough, I found it harder not to cheat with the crackers than I did with the sweets. <laughs> And, you know, since, um, you know, that when you joined the program, that was the first time I had run the program and um, just getting feedback from others who did the program. Um, I did make I did make one change. And so we had done, you know, grain free. Um, but now I give the option of gluten free or grain free, because sometimes that step for some can just be too, too much. Um, and because we're not having a mm -hmm. lot of other of those food sensitivities, it's, um, you know, you're going to know if you react to the to the grains or not. So I do right. suggest a gluten free, you know, gluten free cracker. But um, if you're already gluten free, and you have inflammation, then I do suggest you take that extra that extra step. But um, yeah, yeah, there's, um, yeah, definitely some difficulties there. Well, you know, just just the snacks, right? Grabbing something to a snack to eat. That's uh, if yeah. you're used to snacking yeah. on chocolate and crackers, and that <laughs> can, yeah. can so. well yeah just finding other things to snack on i found i would eat you know maybe more nuts and seeds well yeah. not so much seeds but um nuts and yeah i i had been following a gluten-free diet for many 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 years that's one change that i did make a long time ago that seemed to be successful for me mm -hmm. so um i did stick with that so yeah just eliminating the grain but i really um it helped me to experiment with mm -hmm. doing more things with almond flowers and coconut flour and other types of of nut flowers and that kind of thing and um, i haven't tried cricket flour yet don't know i'm going to <laughs> well and it's you know variety is really yeah. key. and i you know even when you when we do the reintroduction and reintroduce food back in i still really recommend you know have coconut flour then almond flour then oat flour then wheat flour yeah. like just keep changing it up so yeah i think it is a good program just to introduce you to those other other options that are out there that maybe you don't you don't know about and right. um, Right. Oftentimes we get these food sensitivities and gut health problems because we're overeating of a certain certain kind of mm -hmm. food. So, mm -hmm. um, when we did the reintroduction, was there any foods that you found your body that kind of stood out and your body was like, no, we're not doing that right now? Did you notice anything? There? Uh, yeah, there were a, a couple of specific fruits like avocados um, and specific, you know, eat still having to really watch not eating too much fruit or um too much um raw food like mm. you know and mm. especially like we we were doing it partly in the summer and the harvest season and everything where you want to eat a lot of raw you know the, mm -hmm. the lettuces and tomatoes and you know all that kind of stuff um and i think because of my ibs sensitivities I really still had to monitor that very carefully and I still do to this day. I can tell when I've had too many dates or too many um, like the things that might people might not think of as sweets because they're not candy mm -hmm. or they're not sugar, but they are sugar. Yeah. And, and just looking at the sugar content in fruits. Mm -hmm. um, apples is another thing that I just can't digest mm -hmm. well. I can eat yeah. small like you know, out of my husband might have an apple and I'll have two or three slices of it. And that's enough for me. That's it. Yeah. And yeah. if I have more than that, I know it's going to cause an issue. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, those. And I think that's a, um, a wonderful thing. Oh, I'm losing you here. Can you hear me? Okay. okay? 
Okay. Yep. And I think that's a wonderful thing about the reintroduction phase too, is that because we do things very systematically and test out foods individually, you get to know what yep. those trigger foods are. And maybe, you know, maybe we introduce them and they bother you that week, but maybe in two months you could reintroduce yep. them and it would be okay. Or maybe like you, you know, you can just have a few. And so you yep. get that variety and get those nutrients, but you can't, you can't go any further. So yeah. 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 Yeah, and it was particularly hard because, you know, September is apple season. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. But anyhow, um, yeah. Uh, so I think, yeah, overall, um, it was it was a, a good learning curve because it taught me patience. It taught me to um, look for other ways of dealing with the stress of having to deal with this chronic problem. Mm -hmm. um, not that I'm not an emotional eater, but sometimes I would just, okay, if this is going to be screwed up, up, I'm, you know, I might as well eat what I want to eat and don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. And now with this program, I really felt like I shouldn't do that and I couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. So it taught me different ways of managing a long time chronic problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so did you, um, like, so now being, you know, a year later, what, um, what success have you had? Just more awareness or, um, you know, less inflammation overall because of that awareness or what? what yeah, yeah, def definitely more awareness. Um, definitely more interest in trying new things and trying new ways of preparing things that I like in to, to, find like okay I can't eat that raw what can how can I cook it mm -hmm. what can I do to eat it mm -hmm. like one thing that I've learned to love over the years is kale mm -hmm. and I love throwing kale into a smoothie because of the, the vitamin b and all of that kind of stuff but I can't throw it in raw mm -hmm. so but I don't really want to cook it to throw it in a smoothie mm -hmm. so what I do is I stick it in some hot water for a few minutes while I'm preparing everything else that's going into the smoothie. Yeah. And then I will add that. Yeah. That's and a great plus idea. the hot water. Yeah. So that I'm works. adding that extra, the, the any vitamins that have seeped out into the water, go back into the smoothie. Mm -hmm. I get what I want from, and then I'm able to digest it. Yeah. And because so you're just little not, things like that. Yeah. And because you're not, you know, really cooking it a lot you're still getting a lot of a lot of those those nutrients so that's uh, yeah. yeah that's fantastic that's really yeah. great mm -hmm. yeah. so um one other thing we did with this program was the hair analysis test where we tested for food sensitivities and nutrient deficiencies did you find that of any benefit for you Definitely. Um, there were particularly because it's so comprehensive, it just doesn't look at food sensitivities. And there were certain things that I had never really thought of. For example, uh, it came up that I have a sensitivity to certain uh, grasses, wild grasses, and wild rice, which I sometimes like to mix with quinoa or brown rice or whatever, is not a rice. It's not a grain. Right. It's a grass. Mm -hmm. And so that was like, oh, okay, that don't have any more of that because mm -hmm. it really did cause an issue. And had I not had that uh, tolerance test, intolerance test, I wouldn't have even thought of that. Mm -hmm. So there were a lot of different things. And even now, uh, if something's going on and I can't pinpoint it, I'll go back and I'll look at that, that intolerance test and those results again. And I got, okay, right. Mm -hmm. Now that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so, it is really yeah. good information to have for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. Good. Oh. Well, th thank you so much. Is there anything else you wanted to add? Um, yeah, there is one thing that okay. I wanted to add. Um, overall, I felt the program was very successful for me. Uh, the recipes and the support that you gave, I still have all of those recipes. I've gone back to them many, many, many times. Um, that definitely helped. And I think that's maybe what I was missing before is that I would have, uh, I would, I would follow an elimination program suggested by somebody like Julie Daniluk, um, but I didn't have her to support me. Right. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. I had what she was writing. I had that support, yeah, but not personal support. And I think getting the overall support, I certainly had support from family and friends, but getting the overall support from someone like you who is knowledgeable and can make those suggestions of, okay, this doesn't work, let's try this, or maybe, you know, switch it up here and that kind of thing. Just making those different suggestions really, really helped. And so I would definitely recommend this program uh, run by you to anyone oh, wonderful. who is Thank having you. problems. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, it is yeah. true. I mean, I can give you all the information, right? And you can have all that information, but it really, you know, it really comes down to having that coach and having that support by your side. Yeah. And even me, I, I am a coach, I coach others, but I have a coach myself who coaches me. And so again, I yeah. need that. I need that support. I need that other, you know, um, thought process or what about this or what about that? So um, you know, mm -hmm. getting getting that support is really important for for your success in, in anything you do. So thank you for those words. That's yeah. very that's very great. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much Definitely. for your time, Christine. And uh, I'm so glad to hear um, that things are still going well for you. And uh, I wish you all yeah. the best. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Bye. Bye bye.